What's up? My name is Kamal, and I'm gonna show you guys how we mounted this LED bar. It's like a bumper mounted LED bar for the FJ Cruiser. It was really surprisingly not that bad to install. So we did this in, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half. So first thing you gotta do is take off your uh, front bumper. Might've been one of the trickiest parts of the job. Um, so you're just gonna have like 10 millimeters. Like this is where the fenders are. The bumper's like on the front of the car like this. So. You just have 10 millimeters here, here, and then all along the bottom, and then up this side as well, obviously. So you just gotta get those off, and then there's gonna be uh, three uh, like push pin clips in here. You can see them right here. There's three there, and where those are in the car, down in these locations, one's uh, hidden to the left over there, and um, then one's directly in the middle right here. And then there's one more hidden to the right on this side. So to get those out, uh, Miranda just used a flathead screwdriver. So after you have all that stuff disconnected, um, it's really just yanking it. So if you see this lip, uh, this edge that goes all the way around the top part of the bumper, um, I think that was really the trickiest part to get it out because it's, uh, wedged in between these little areas here and um same thing on the other side so you just kind of have to give it a good yank and make sure you pull it around the fender liner and this bulky part right here so once you get that off the next thing you're going to do is where the uh, crash bar is mounted to the vehicle there's you know one bolt on the inside and three bolts on the outside so you got to take these three uh three nuts off so same thing on this side, you take those three nuts off. Uh, and these are the brackets that um, come with the kit and you can see how they go on there. You just put those on and then put the nuts back on and just tighten them down. These were uh, pretty tough to get off. So they're obviously on there pretty tight to support this. So I didn't torque them down any particular amount. I just got them nice and snug for all six. And then the next thing you do is just take the light bar and put it in between the two brackets you put on there. And then you're just gonna use uh, these bolts and they have washers as well. So just make sure you don't forget to put the washer on there. So you just put one on each side. And when you get them down snug, you can adjust this to the angle you want it. I mean, it's pretty cool because since you have the crash bar, that seems like it's pretty level in you know up and down direction. So you can kind of I was kind of eyeballing this to this. It kind of slightly has like a barely tilt like up a little bit, but I kind of did that intentionally because I mean, we're not really gonna be using this on the road. It's more of an off-road thing. And that's how you should use it. So after you get this on, the next thing you're gonna do is uh, there's the wiring that's attached to this. So what I did was I fished it up this way. And then when you come up here, you can actually see it's uh, that wire that's fished up through there. And then there's a little hole that goes into the engine bay. Then we fished it through there. And then we fished it around the back side of the battery and fished it up here. And then the opposite connector, we fished up under here the other way. And then we connect them right here and then tuck that down in there. So this is all like the harness that you get uh, when you get this. So you're gonna have these two terminals that have to be on power and ground. So when you lift this up, uh, this is a 12 millimeter right here. So you're gonna unscrew that and put your red wire on here, tighten that down snug. And while I was at it, I made sure this one was snug because when I broke this loose, this whole thing kind of shifted around. So you just put your uh, power wire there and then for the ground, I used this ground connection here. So I just unscrewed this bolt, put the ground one underneath there and tighten that one back down. So obviously before I started all that, I disconnected this, uh, the ground on the battery and just put a shop rag here so it wouldn't keep making contact. Disconnected that, then this, then that. Put this one on, put this one on, put this back on. And then you have this little relay for when you push the button to turn on the light bar so this uh, 
bolt right here for this like fuse box or ECU box. Um, if you come over here, it actually, I don't know if it was meant to be mounted here because it almost looks like it. I took this bolt off and you can see this like sits on this larger lip here and then kind of dips down that way. So it almost like looks like it was meant to be mounted here. Uh, so I would definitely recommend mounting that there. And then as you can see, uh, there's a lot of excess wire. So just use zip ties and just kind of tidied it up as best as I could. And so obviously you need to get it through the firewall so you can have the button mounted in the interior. So this rubber boot here where your wiring harness goes through to the driver's footwell is where we did that. And what we used, um, well while I'm at I explained like all the tools you need. So like to get those clips off for the bumper, we just use this little flathead screwdriver. To get those bolts off on the crash bar, just use a ratchet and a 14 millimeter. And then the little uh, bolts that go on to hold the light bar onto the attachments is just these Allen wrenches. They supply you with this one if you get the kit. I mean, I'll put the link to the description where I got this. And then uh, for the battery, you just have, uh, well, this had the 10 for the bumper as well. And then uh, the 10 and the 12 for the battery stuff. And then now we get to this rubber boot and this is what we, I used, uh, just this pokey tool. Um, so I actually did this from the inside and had Miranda out here just watching to where I got it. But I just poked through right here in between like this is where like the cable for your uh, hood latches. And then there was this little knobby piece here. So I poked through like right there. I mean, when you're in the inside, you'll be able to see those two spots. And I'll show you a camera angle from that in a second here. So I just poked through there. I poked through like, you know, kind of like two or three holes, I guess. Um, just like one, two, and three right here. So I could have a, a wider area. And then I kind of just used this flathead poking in from the inside as well, just to like break the little uh, rubber strands that were held together between the three holes, basically. So uh, after that, um, we can show you what we did in here. So you can see, uh, the rubber boot and uh, where I poked through it. Um, I know that it's kind of hard to tell with the light, but you can kind of see where the cable is and where that little knobby part is from this end and poke through accordingly. And then uh, all the wiring, uh, just there's a big harness behind where all that extra wire is kind of snaked back and forth and I just zip tied it. And then there's a connector to where the, the switch is up there. So zip tied that up there and then kind of just uh, snaked it through over here. And it kind of goes back up this way. And I zip tied it to this uh, little harness right here. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see all this, but it's kind of, you know, snaked through to over there. And then right here and uh, kind of snaked it behind where those uh bolts are so it couldn't fall down you can see where it snakes out here from there and then that snakes up to the panel here which is where we mounted the switch um so on our particular fj i know depending on the model you have the buttons that are here will change but these two were blank the left and the the right or blank so I just put it on this top one here and uh that's pretty much it you just have the off and on and when you hit it the, the light bar comes on and it's uh it's pretty bright it's pretty sweet we like it um I think the only other tool I didn't mention was just these die cutters for the zip ties for just cutting the excess um, and then the only other thing I didn't really talk about was this, uh, this grill piece here, um, it's just clipped in with all these clips here and you just move these clips and undo this grill piece. Um, so this is actually where the, the light bar is going to sit directly where the grill piece was. Now that I explained all that, I'm, we're going to put the bumper back on and then we'll show you what it looks like, uh, once we get that done. So we just got, uh, Got everything back on um like i showed you guys how i had it kind of angled up 
uh, we put the bumper on and looked at it and as you can see here it's closer to the top part than the bottom part um, it's also kind of recessed it doesn't stick through and I was I think I was reading that they did that to you know so there's still airflow through here because you know you had that grill there with a lot of airflow now I mean this does restrict it a little bit but you can tell you see they put it to the top so you do have this gap here at the bottom to let air still go through there but what I was trying to say was we ended up taking it back off and just loosening the two screws and angling it a little more down so it looks a little more flush like even with the way the bumper is uh, and the other cool thing I didn't uh, mention earlier is uh, this does come with a cover so if you're going on long trips you can snap this on just so you don't get a bunch of bugs and crud on it so that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. So when we opened everything before we uh, started doing this install, uh, I mean, there's a ton of pieces and bolts and washers and stuff, uh, but we really didn't use any of it. I guess all that stuff comes with the kit because you can also mount this on other vehicles, um, but you'll just need all these little adapters and stuff uh, for doing that. Um, so, yeah, we didn't really use anything except two washers like this and those two hex bolts that just go into the LED light bar to hold it in place. So it was really straightforward and now we just have a ton of extra stuff, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, we'll just show you shots of the, the light bar um, just without it on and then with it on, it's it's pretty cool. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for anybody that uh, bought this kit and was just trying to like figure out the best way to install it. And they do give you a ton of excess wire. So that was really just part of the challenge is just getting all that clean because you don't really want it all over the engine bay. Uh, so just take your time with that part. Um, the most frustrating thing about the job, like I said, was just popping the bumper off initially. It's, uh, I guess when the stuff's on for a while, it gets like that. And um, the zip ties like underneath the driver's foot well was also challenging because some of them I had to like get with just one hand and it took a little while, but if you take the time and just get that stuff right, uh, it's better because you don't want all that snaked wire like falling down when you're driving around. So just take your time to get that right and uh, it works out well. So like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see what else I'm going to do to this car and all my other cars. Uh, the next thing for this is a lift kit, which I guess we'll be starting tomorrow, uh, like a three inch leveling kit. So that'll be cool. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Peace. So it's uh few days later from when I put that light bar on and as you guys can see the the sticky thing um, didn't stay in its place I think that's kind of due to the fact that since I had it like turned up like this uh, which was really helpful in keeping the wire out of the way but uh, I guess it kind of was like putting a little bit of pressure on it that way I mean I know just with any type of sticky adhesive stuff it's kind of a game you have to play with it whether or not it'll stick or not so um, I mean, this stuff actually does stick really well, but as you could see, I think the fact that it was kind of being pulled a little bit to the left because of the way I wired it, that it came off. What I'm going to do is actually just put a little dab of crazy glue in the middle and then hold it on here. I don't think I'll have to ever really take it off again. I mean, even if I do, um, it's not like it's impossible to get off with just a dab of it. So yeah, I mean, if anybody was doing this install, and I just figured I'd point this out just because it will be an annoyance if that keeps falling on you. And if you are going to do the same thing I'm doing with putting the crazy glue on, uh, really just put like a small dab in the middle because when you press this back on, that's going to spread around. So you really don't need much. But uh, I think that that's like the best solution I could come up with with keeping it on there without having to like put anything over the top of this to tape it or secure it. And um, also, I mean, if I do crazy glue it, it still will come off if you pull on it hard enough or just use like a razor blade to get underneath to kind of 
separate it from this piece if you do need to take it off for some reason. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I just kinda actually just put like a line of it and then a little blob at the bottom there. Actually it's a little more than I intended to put on there but we'll see how it mounts up. Just wiping the excess off the bottom here. I had some drip down on here as well. So if you're doing this like me, just make sure you do that. It's just so you don't have uh, just dried glue on the other parts here. So I'm just kind of holding pressure on it while it does its initial cure. And as you can see, the last thing I did was just stick some painter's tape on there just to help it hold in place while that crazy glue cures. So it's uh, been a couple days now. Um, since I put it back on with the crazy glue and um, it's been holding in place well. Uh, I guess that was the only issue with the whole kit is just adhesive stuff like that normally doesn't want to stick on that well especially in like textured areas so that's why I chose to put it on this button because it was a smoother surface so sticky stuff will want to stick better but really I mean you could put it anywhere in the in here I mean I guess you could even put it over here or they give you so much wire as you guys saw so you can kind of put it wherever but I like this location just because it's with all the other buttons and uh, so the only thing you got to do to really make it stick is use crazy glue.